Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Successful Woman's Mindset. My name is Galit Ventura Rosen. I am co-founder of Everyday Woman TV, where you are probably watching this episode right now. One of my favorite things to do in the world is to spotlight women from all over the world that are making a difference in women's lives, in children's lives, in society's lives. I have one of those ladies with me today, and I'm so excited to introduce you to Linda Tache, and she's the co-founder and CEO of the Collaboration Center Foundation. Welcome, Linda. Thank you so much, Galid. It's wonderful to be here. I love having you on. I will share with you that I have not had anyone on that really speaks about philanthropy and giving back and leaving a legacy. And I definitely believe that you're, you embody that wholeheartedly since the first day I met you, which I think has been over five, seven years. I don't even know. Really? Linda is a, right. It's been at least five to seven years. Linda lives in Las Vegas, just like me. So we're right around the corner from each other. And I would love if we started with you sharing a little bit about yourself with everybody that's watching and listening. Yeah, so thank you again for this opportunity. And I really look forward to sharing you know, information and my passion with everyone that's watching. So you know, um, first and foremost, um, I'm a parent um, of a son that, that had, uh, has special needs. You know, he has autism and um, ADHD and some other challenges going on. Um, but before I had my son, you know, growing up, I was always volunteering, you know, I, I have a servant heart and I was always, you know, I did stuff for Special Olympics, um, you know, Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, you know, anything really I saw where a need was, I wanted to just help and make a difference. So that's kind of how I, I was growing up anyways. So when my son was born, it kind of was a game changer um, because it became really personal, right? This this cause, um, you know, um, became so close to home. So so I, um, you know, if, right when he was, you know, getting diagnosed, I just really jumped in and I just, you know, because I was struggling, I struggled so hard and here I'm educated and I had connections and I thought, if I'm struggling, what are these other families that can't advocate for themselves or don't have their income, you know, resources? And so um, basically um, I got involved um, first off with the autism legislation in the state of Nevada. That was in 2007. Um, and then right after that, I just thought, you know what? I can't go back to corporate world. I need to like keep moving forward uh, to make a difference for these families, you know, because as Grant was growing, I was like thinking, what can I do, you know, to help families? So um, 2009, I started my first nonprofit, um, which ignorance is bliss, knowing what I know now um, and how hard it is. And, um, you know, it takes a, a lot to do it and maintain it and grow it. I, um, I started um, Grant to Gift Autism Foundation. So that was um, in 2009. And we had a couple programs. We were a volunteer organization, but then we grew and grew. We started hiring therapists, um, you know, because as Grant was growing up, I saw things that, you know, were needed in the community. And so it grew into an amazing organization. And in 2016, we actually partnered with the School of Medicine and created the autism clinic for the practice plan. Amazing. So, yeah. So it just, and how you many know, families? I know it's so huge. I can't even oh, yeah. comprehend today. But how many families are you guys? just helping a year. How many are they helping now? A yeah, year? well, I know. So yeah. I transitioned out of running grant to gift in 2017. But at sure. that time, we were serving over 5000 yes. um, children and family members annually. And that was with treatment, support services, vocational yes. training, um, you know, support groups. Um, yeah, so and I'm sure it's grown um, even greater since then. So you know, but it's still isn't isn't serving um, the whole need, right? Because there's so much need out there. Of course, of course. So tell us a little bit about your journey into yes. your new project, the Collaboration Center and Foundation. Yes, yes, I love to talk about this. So, you know, Grant, um, as Grant was growing up, you know, mm -hmm. and I transitioned out of um, Grant to Gift, I started consulting because I thought, you know, I've learned so much that yes. I need to share this with other nonprofits. And it didn't have to be disability related. So I was helping people start nonprofits, but then if there was a nonprofit that was young and kind of, you know, um, not doing much, you know, they were kind of in, in a lull or whatever, mm -hmm. I'd actually come in and help them start their business plan, 
do a launch event and really get them, you know, really um, understanding what their programs, mission, vision are, and then really help them get launched, right? So I was right. starting nonprofits, launching nonprofits. Um, and so, um, so I ended up getting approached in 2018 about this concept of not just autism or not just Down syndrome, but let's, let's have an inter or a disability inclusive campus that families, you know, can really come. It's a destination for them. It's welcoming. And really, it's going to give them resources through the whole lifespan and for every family member. So that's a huge undertaking. So we thought, you know, knowing what I knew before with my other nonprofit, how much it took to hire people and, you know, open, you know, more space. We thought, you know what, if we can collaborate with other organizations, we can build capacity and it's sustainable. It's so much more sustainable if you have others involved. And you know, I think, you know, over the years, that's really been the buzzword, collaborate. Yes. Um, but really, right? I mean, because really that's what we need to do. We have to come together to really, yes. you know, solve these issues, right? And so, but a lot of organizations have been around for so long that really their model wasn't initially set up like that. So it's hard to really do that on a large scale. I mean, people are referring, connecting, but really the treatment of collaborating is really not happening. So that was how, so I was brought in to write the business plan uh -huh. and, um, and start their nonprofit. <laughs> of course. It was an idea. It was an writing the plan. There were things in there that I had wanted to do at the other organization that I couldn't because it just didn't fit. Yeah. And so, right. So I started falling in love with it. And then the next thing, you know, I'm, I'm recruiting board members. I'm recruiting. I love it. And then people are saying, well, I'll get involved if you're running it. Of course. <laughs> I already said that to you before I got on the call with you. Yes, exactly. And I just, so was so invested in it. You know, I had, I just, I had to do it. I had to get involved. So in 2019, we started the nonprofit. 2020, I officially became the president and CEO. And um, and then, you know, we've just done just amazing things just in the short period of time. And mind you, this was right when COVID was happening. Of so course. it's amazing, <laughs> amazing what we've been able to do. I have to share with you, Linda, it's, it's amazing to me how many new businesses, organizations, ideas came out of what I call the pause. It's it, You are not the first person to say, I just got done telling Linda about how Everyday Woman got started, which most of you know, March 2020, I have this joke that Angela and I had some free time. <laughs> I mean, it's really the truth. All of a sudden, it was four weeks of not going to the office, not traveling yeah. for speaking. My businesses came to a halt because everybody was doing the wait and see and yeah. Angela and I had spoken about it. We actually started our entity in November, 2019, okay. but we got busy. Life happened. We yeah. put it aside and March, 2020 came and we're all right, let's go. And it, it, it blew up in such a positive way. I, I really look at the collaboration center. It's really going to be almost a campus, isn't it, Linda? Yes, it is. It take, is. Us through, take us through a little bit of a visual of what you're seeing come together. Yes, absolutely. So we um, we went back and forth when we were we knew we would have to have a, a campus, right, right. To, to really house other nonprofits and, and providers and agencies. So we um, we actually were very fortunate to purchase a five acre. It was a horse ranch. We're not doing horses, but That's it was- That's what I heard. I heard it yes, was a horse yes. ranch. And a lot of people, actually it was a, a staple in the community. It was called Hawaii Ranch, White Horse mm -hmm. Youth Ranch, which is still mm -hmm. a nonprofit. They're actually operating um, in another state right now, but, but it was called that and it was known as that. And so um, it was up for sale and in August of 2020, Go figure what we were just talking yes. about. Um, we had some very, very generous donors um, step up and um, funders and say, you know what, we're going to help you get in this. And and it was um, the the 
Good news was, is that it was a significant amount, but the other side is that we still needed to raise some money to get into the property. So during, you know, that time, it was very challenging because we didn't have a lot of history under our belt. And like you said, everybody was wait and see. Donors, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the market? You know, all this stuff was going on, but we got in. We, we purchased the five acre um, ranch um, in August of 2020. And then, of course, we had to do a lot of stuff. We had to rezone the property to commercial. Sure. Um, we have there's a 7500 square foot house um, that has seven bedrooms. So we had to figure, you know, make it ADA compliant. Um, and then there's the stables, which are like, oh my gosh, it's like 17,000 square foot stables. They're like unbelievable. And so there's two rooms in the front <clears throat> that we're converting to a grab and go cafe. So that families, you know, again, we're creating this destination that families will be able to go instead of waiting in a little small clinic room while their kids are getting served, they can go in the cafe, they can, you know, grab a coffee, get a sandwich. <clears throat> and the great thing is, is that we're going to have people with disabilities um, actually training and working there as well. I love that. So what's the goal to have this campus done? What are, what goal yeah. are we looking for? Yes, yes. And so, um, and just to add a little bit more yes, to please. it is that we do have um, a developmental preschool. So we are serving the whole lifespan. So that's mm -hmm. how we're unique as well. So we don't have an, a, a drop off age. So we're going from preschool through treatment mental health, medical, Amazing. education, all the way to adult programming. So, And, and that'll all be there on location. Yes, yep, wow. one-stop shop. And so we, as of right now, we have about seven facility partners okay. that will be operating on campus doing, you know, various things. And then the horse arena, the goal, and we still have to raise the money for that, the goal is going um, to be to make that into a recreation um, event center for, yeah. for families as well. Have a community pool, pickleball court, basketball, and events. Yeah. So that's really the whole, that's the campus itself. So we were very fortunate to answer your question about timeline. We were very fortunate to um, get six million from the state. You know, there were a lot of COVID funds that had come down the pipeline. So we got six million and what that's allowing us to do is build infrastructure because we're on well and septic. So we have to bring in more power, you know, utilities. So, and we're going to re kind of re landscape and we have to pave and do all this stuff. So with that piece and also the, the stables, um, that that's what we're looking at to, to do in that phase. And so that's already started and we're hoping, um, if all goes well to have it, finished um, by January or February of 2023. That is amazing. That's Absolutely great. amazing. I would love if you would share a little bit for those that are listening and watching. There's so many people out there that have this yeah. inkling, this feeling of, I want to do more. I want to give back. And sometimes that's an overwhelming feeling. My experience with people that are not sure how to they get a little overwhelmed with the idea, but it doesn't go away. From your experience, having someone from someone that's able to just volunteer maybe one or two hours a week versus someone that chooses to be on the board and really or be an employee and be really hands on. What kind of advice or what kind of ideas can you give those that are watching and listening that say, I want to be a part of something bigger? I'm passionate about whatever it might be that they are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's such a, a great, you know, point. And I, and I think it's really important because I know that, that, you know, all of us are here for a purpose, right? Um, and it's not just to, um, you know, become successful and then just, you know, kind of live in our own bubble. Right. Um, and I think that, you know, all of us really have a responsibility too to give back in some way, but like you said, everybody has different capacity and time. You know, so there's so many different ways. And I would say if somebody, first off, if somebody is um, struggling to, to figure out what it is that they want to support, I would say, look at, look at your family, look at your network. You know, do you have any friends or family that are, are struggling from something, right? Do they, you know, is it mental health? Is it a physical challenge? You know, anything. So I would say, look first to see if there's anyone in your personal sphere of influence that might 
you know, have a challenge that maybe there's an organization that is supporting that, then I would say that's a good place to start. I don't recommend starting your own non nonprofit. <laughs> you well, that, you know. Linda and I just had this conversation right yes. before we got on recording yes. that I know people that want to start their no own nonprofit and good for you. By the way, Linda does consult. <laughs> so yeah. if you want to start your own nonprofit, you can talk to Linda about teaching yeah. you how. But yeah. I was mentioning to Linda that I've been in philanthropy since the day I was born. I was like, you raised in it. My parents have given back when we had, when we didn't have, when we had again, when we didn't have again. Yeah. Yeah. And I said to Linda, yeah, you don't need to worry about me starting a nonprofit. <laughs> I am happy to support all the ones that I'm yeah. passionate about. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of good nonprofits out there and you just have to search and find, mm -hmm. but but yeah, it is, it's very, very, very um, consuming um, to do it yourself. Um, so I would say, try to find something that's that's out there. And then like, like you're saying, there's so many levels that you can give. We call it the time, talent and treasure, right? So, you know, if you have the time and resources, of course, board positions are critical to the success of an organization, right? But then also mm -hmm. like what with us, we have committees. So let's say somebody, you know, doesn't have the time to do a board position. Well, join a committee, you know, yes. we have events throughout the year. Um, you know, we have, um, you know, different initiatives, campaigns, you know, awareness campaigns. So that's another way to get involved. Um, you can volunteer, you know, during, you know, with programming, you know, different programs. So Linda, I would love it if you told everybody how they could learn more about the Collaboration Center and Foundation. And also if someone is interested in starting their own nonprofit, how they can get a hold of you to learn more about your consulting. Absolutely, absolutely. So yes, we are always looking for volunteers, um, committee members, um, supporters and donors. So you can reach out to us at um, collablv.org. That's C-O-L-L-A-B-L-V.org. And I would say most importantly, if anybody watching this has a family member or a friend that has a child that either needs to get diagnosed or even you know support groups or services, you can also go to our website and reach out to our free case management team and they'll hold your hand and get you connected to the, the resources that you need. Um, yeah, so we really, you know, we, we really need everyone to come together to help make this successful. So please Perfect. reach out to us. And then also if anyone is interested in, you know, um, talking about, you know, their own nonprofit or have ideas or thoughts, I'm always um, available as well to um, help with that. And um, you can reach out to me um, personally at Linda, L-Y-N-D-A, at nextgenstrategicsolutions.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining me today. My I appreciate pleasure. you. I'm excited to share this episode with everybody because I think that it's so amazing what you guys are building in Las Vegas. I'm excited to be a part of all of it as well and try to support you as much as I can in the community. And I appreciate everybody for watching and listening another episode of the Successful Woman's Mindset. My name is Galit Ventura-Rosen and I will see you next time.